Morning. Tuesday today, not Monday. I know in the last video I said you'd see me on Monday, but uh, plans changed yesterday and it was just a bit of a nothing day and I didn't bother filming and I was tired after the weekend and I thought I'll just have a day off the day off the filming. Um, when I came to edit the videos or the video on Friday, it was an hour long, so I split it in half and that then allowed me to have a day off yesterday of filming. So anyway, you haven't missed the big digger fun. Um, I did go to one of them yesterday. I was told both of them were working nearby and then when it came to actually going to them, they were hundreds of miles apart. So that other big digger is to do on Thursday. So you'll see that at the end of the week or on the weekend. I'm heading, I'm heading to do that water pump today. Water pump is in stock now. I've got it in the bag. It's only just after half past eight. So yeah, we're gonna have a good start to the day. Get up the road now and um, service at 2.10 on the way back down the road. That's just a 500 hour service. Got to cool it in the van. Ready to go. I'm ready to hit the road. Um, so yeah, let's go. So here we are, beautiful day up in the hills. Um, so I'm draining the coolant, as you can see. Um, we're going to change this water pump. So if you missed, actually, it'll be the previous video. Came to do the um, water pump, uh, not the water pump, the fan drive recall, and found that the bearing was already away the machine's just done over it 800 hours um, so that kind of put a stop to the recall there's no point taking all this off and replacing it because i was gonna to have to come back and change the water pump anyway so i might as well do it all as i want to today um, the fella isn't using it this week, he's on a different job. So it's perfect, it's worked out really well. It, where it was last week, last Friday, that was the job finished and uh, it's ready to start its next job next week. And I'll have it ready for him. Looks like the machine's had a good wash off and he must spray like WD-40 over the engine because everything's just got a sheen of oil, can you see? I've never seen that before, but it's a nice way to keep an engine bay looking clean and tidy, isn't it? Maybe until the dust sticks to it, but I would imagine he power washes it all down and then sprays everything back up to keep the rust at bay. Hmm. Yeah, the machine is immaculate. I'm hoping all the coolant, sh all the coolant should go into that empty drum. Um, I've got new coolant that I'll put in it. So, yeah, right, I need two hands for this because I'm going to slacken the uh, belt tension. Or should I? No, I'll crack these bolts off for the fan drive first. Then I've got something to help us keep hold of the fan and stop the fan from going out. There's the old one with the knackered bearing. There's the new one with the not knackered bearing and hopefully with the new uh, fan drive shaft there'll be no more knackered bearings. It wasn't a bad little job. The only problem I had was the spring clips that they used to, instead of being a Jubilee clip, they used them spring clips. Let's see if I can zoom you in. And that one over there. Yeah, that spring clip there. That was really awkward to get on because it was facing towards the block. Same with this one on this side. But yeah, not a bad little job this. <laughs> Especially in the sunshine. It's tremendous. That bolt there, didn't need to take that one out. 
That one goes back in here. Let me just see. That needs to go back in there. Put that one back in. I was doing it by feel, you see. And that one felt like it needed to come out. And when I pulled it out and saw the length of it, I thought, that's strange. It's a bit shorter than the first one I took out. I'll just whiz that one back in while I'm... while I can see it. <laughs> uh, I just need to pl yeah, polish up the surface that it's going to mount to. Got a new gasket standing by. Just a case of putting it back together. Yeah, I wasn't sure what sort of a job it would be. Uh, normally on little diggers it's awkward and fiddly, but to be honest with you, if I wanted more space, I could pull that out of the way. But I don't really need any more space. My face is pressed up against there a little bit, but I really can't and shouldn't complain. All right then. Can you tell I'm using my uh, new camera stand? Very automatic. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> right. <clears throat> what I might do is try and get you. I wonder if I can kind of like prop this up in here somehow. Maybe I'll see us putting it back together. back together now what I did is I used one of these bolts here which uh, holds the fan guard on just to line up the holes so now I've got that fan belt on I should where are you at there should be able to pull that one out now and that should keep everything in line I've got a hole right at the top so that should make life easy for lining up the new fan drive Good, that's that part of the job done. Get the fan drive out the van now and put it all back together, bang some coolant in it, run it for half an hour. Make sure it doesn't overheat, make sure the coolant's circulating, make sure there's no air locks and make sure our level is correct. Um, didn't notice before I took the tap out of there, that's the drain tap there for the coolant. That's where the coolant level was before starting. So. It obviously has settled in over time from being new. Um, yeah, not much more to add. It's a lovely little job, this. Especially when the weather is as good as it is. <laughs> Magic. Right, there's the new fan hub on. Um, as usual, it's always a good idea while you can just make sure everything turns freely without catching anything no playing that now everything's turning nicely so we can take the tension i'm not sure i'm going to take that out i nearly fitted the fan in front of this like that the problem with magnetic torches isn't it you forget all about them i once one i once i once had one of these magnetic torches go on the back of a wagon all the way to newcastle and back <laughs> <laughs> it's still there when the wagon came back, but it's a good job. If it was our wagon and not uh, not somebody else's. Right, take that out of there. I'm sure you truck mechanics will know all about that. Right, all on, make sure all the belts are sat in the grooves. Yeah, super smashing great. Right, whoops. There goes my special locking device. Okay, two bolts left. In fact, well, I remember. I'll uh, do that tap up. And I don't forget, because it's the sort of thing that you'll do. You'll be pouring water back in forever in a day, thinking this thing's taking forever to fill up. There we go. Alright. Okay, two-hander this, because I need to hold the bracket. 
Yeah, we've got coolant in it. I'm going to start it now. I should put that lid on, shouldn't I? That'd be a good idea. I'm not seeing anything leaking. I'm pretty confident everything's tight. Uh, now then, I'm pretty sure the process for this is run it at low idle for 10 minutes and then run it and then check it. Run it at low idle and then up to a high idle and then check it. Pretty sure that's how it goes. I had this half open drum, um, which has taken it up and it'd be, <laughs> be a shame to top it up with a brand new drum. But anyway, we'll see. We have to, we have to. Right, we're running. No leaks. So let it run like that, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll check it. So, as this is a rework job, and you've probably not seen me do this before, I'll let you in behind the scenes. So. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, when I am um, a bit later in the morning setting off for work or getting out the yard because I've been doing admin, um, some of the warranty jobs that I've done, or all the warranty jobs that I do, need this sort of information sending up to our warranty man to be able to raise a claim uh, with Develon. Now in this case, Develon need to know that you have completed the rework so they can tick this machine off their outstanding list of machines to do. Um, and to do that we need a minimum of four pictures of the machine so a picture from each corner of the machine um, to sort of show the state of repair or the state that it's in um, we also need a picture of the serial number and the hour meter and pictures of the old parts pictures of the new parts pictures of the new parts fitted and a general area of where you fitted that new part um, that's pictures wise and then what we do is we pull a report off the machine so in this report all the details should marry up to the hour meter that you've taken um, and it's all just evidence gathering to prove that you were here to prove that you've done the job and not just told develop yeah we did that last week type of thing you can tick that off your list um, and then 18 months later the water pump goes and develop like oh uh, we've got a problem with uh, fan drive still or something like that it just keeps everything up to date um, so it does so once I've collected all of this then uh, when I get quite five minutes I'll email it all up to HQ and they deal with it after that so yeah but if I miss any of the information gathering then the the report, the claim can't be processed. So it's very important at my end that I get all the information. And sometimes when you're in the heat of the moment, you forget to get a picture of the serial number, or you forget to get a picture of the hour meter, and that's stressful. That stresses me out, that does, because I know that the work that I've done can't be processed because I've forgotten to take a picture. Um, so that can be a little bit annoying but I've been doing it now for 13 years and generally I would say 95% of the time the warranty man might tell me differently I generally get all the right stuff <laughs> that's the goal anyway otherwise I get him on the phone asking why I haven't uh, got X, Y and Z but yeah it's not just as simple as coming, doing the job, and packing up and going to the next one. Um, not a big deal in this case because I need to sit, sit around for 10-15 minutes while the machine warms up and I can check the uh, coolant spread through and everything like that. As you can see, I can't type and talk at the same time. My wife's always the same. If I'm replying to some of your comments uh, on YouTube and my wife's trying to tell us what's going on on the weekend or something like that. She says, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening, but I can't respond because I'm busy typing. I can't do two things at once. <laughs> right, there we go. Save that document. And that's that. So everything else I've got on my phone, all I need to do now is uh, check the coolant level. Okay, coolant temperature is 
51 degrees so my thermostat hasn't opened yet but I'm just gonna switch it off now and go and check the level I would imagine it should still be in the same place it might have settled out a bit into the engine block and what have you but I'll go and have a look have a nosy I've got a rag in my pocket but I'm pretty sure it'll be okay there won't be much pressure in here I don't think a little bit which is a good thing oh Oh, we're coming up out, coming up out. That coolant is still cold. So, I'll get a rag and mop that up because otherwise, either me or the customer might glance in there later and see coolant hanging about and suspect that we've got a leak. The problem with coolant, it just it's everywhere quickly, doesn't it? At least with oil, it generally moves quite slowly. Right. Caps on. Right, we've got coolant in there, so I'm gonna rev it up a bit now and let the thermostat open. Speaking of coolant and things, the uh, Halford's fridge is packed in. So, I'd like to get another one. It must have been away. It must have been two weeks ago because I remember driving the van and smelling an electrical burning smell. Um, and it was just after I'd done my brakes on the van and I thought it was just the brake pads bedding in. Um, and I just remember that burning -y smell when I was driving the van and I just couldn't put my finger on what it was and obviously I've got all my fuses and things for all my extra auxiliaries like lights and uh, inverter wiring and all that stuff underneath the seat here so I'd pulled it all out and checked my fuses, checked all my wiring, everything was nice and clean, nothing was rubbing and I just didn't know what it was and then it was the other day I went to get my second bottle of water out the fridge and it was room temperature. So yeah, fridge is packed in. Now, I reckon it's probably something to do with the fact that it's laid on its side. Because you're supposed to have it, I think you're pretty, I'm pretty sure anyway, you're supposed to have it stood up. But it sits down in there nicely, it's out of the way. And um, some mornings before work, I need to take the kids to um, nursery or grandparents etc and so if it was up on the seats it would be in the way all the time down there it's out the way but lying it on its side maybe hasn't done it any good or it's just reached the end of its life because it's running for the whole time that the ignition's on I don't know I'm going to get another one because it wasn't very expensive uh, that'll be about did I have it in my old van? Yes, I had it in my old van. So it's at least three year old that. And I always said it was the best 50 quid I ever spent. Bet inflation, I bet it's 65 now. So that's on my to-do list, I don't need to buy one. In fact, I should just go online and buy it because I keep on thinking to myself as I leave out, as I leave Carlisle, I think, oh, never called into Halfords for a new fridge. But that's a must have that, I do miss it. I do. It'd be nice to integrate it properly into the van. There's a lot of space under the seats here. I've got some uh, training manuals and things like that under there, which I very rarely go into. Um, main reason for that is it's just a faff to pull the seat up, etc. Um, what have I got in here? Just all sorts of junk, I think. Oh, look how filthy that is. Ugh. Hats and stuff. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice if it was sat in there, wouldn't it? And then I'm gonna just peel the seat forward, get my sandwiches out and then put the seat back down. But spare t-shirt, you just never know. Spare t-shirt, there'd be socks in there somewhere. Not worse than having wet feet all day. And some books and <clears throat> old stuff that I don't need anymore. But I think to myself, I might need that one day. So I'll keep it in there, out of sight, out of mind. I'm pretty sure the thermostat must have opened because before I showed you my fridge I glanced in here and it was at 63 degrees and it's gone down to uh, 
57 now. And what I might do is just work it a bit, put a bit of load on the engine and give it a workout. Yeah, I've got it pretty hot there now. It's just above 90 degrees. Um, and it got there very quickly, so the coolant obviously isn't circulating. Maybe airlock, so I'll... If you get a machine that hot, don't just switch it off. Best thing you can do with a machine that's overheating is let it go back down to idle for a bit, because then at least the fan's still running. Never switch a machine off when it's red hot. There's more damage than good. Unless your fan belt snapped, in which case you might as well just switch it off. Um, yeah, I'll just let that temperature come back down a bit and there'll be air in the system, I need to take the cap off. Ah, good. The um, coolant needed a good glug more, so it's made it worthwhile opening that drum. It'll be four or five litres I've topped it up with. So hopefully now we should be golden. should be good to go. Okay, that's better. We're running a mid, well, late 70s. Um, You'll find it gets up to about 82, 83, and then it drops back down again. So that's good. Very stable. I think you can say that's a good job well done. Just need to top up that expansion bottle a touch. Ever so slightly. We're arriving. You spot the digger. Oof, it is a rough lane, this one. Hellfire. Listen to that. I tell you what. Please, I've got my new belly plate on. That is a good thing. Aye, it's still a nice day. Where he's going to put us? I'm not doing it over a river. <laughs> yeah, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. I'll tell him I'm going up the top and I'm turning around. I'll go up the top and turn around. I'll turn right. Can you do it here? Yeah. Do whatever you want. Just not over that little river. <laughs> Hey dear. There's a bit of a wind, so hopefully the clegs and the flies will be away. Mmm, the smell of peat. It's an acquired taste, I can tell you that much. It's a very, very earthy smell quite stale and uh, yeah. this turning circles further away than I remember on a really rubbish road right then see you later Paul no worries man um, <laughs> he's been bitten alive by Cleggs. <laughs> there is a lot of Cleggs about. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'll show you this. This is the machine that I put a new AdBlue injector in about three, four weeks ago. Um, the story was it was using a lot of AdBlue. Uh, I think he said it was about three and a half drums a week compared to the other DX210s that do the exact same job for the exact same company and the operators generally do the same amount of hours on their machine. I could prove that by doing the downloads and having a look at the operating times etc. But this one was using about a drum and a half more per week than everybody else. And if you remember I put it down to the AdBlue injector every time I pull that injector out. It was all crusted up and monkey and minging. Anyway, when I got here, he said, oh, that uh, had blue consumption. I was like, oh, because I've, I've not, 
I've not, not been looking forward to coming back here, but I've not heard anything since fitting that Adblue injector. So I thought he's maybe just saved it up for me to have a look at while I'm servicing it. Um, I, he says it's a difference of night and day. I was like, oh, good. He says, yeah, come and have a look. So he showed us his screen. Look, over half a tank left in it. And he filled up on Friday morning. So that is three days work. So that's good. Anyway, he's away home. It's half past two. Probably have to half past two then. Uh, he's away home. He started at three, half past three this morning. Said he started. Now he said three o'clock. He said I left house at three o'clock this morning. <laughs> I prefer to get up of a morning and get home of a night. Sure does. Hell fire. So he's done his twelve hours already today. Man, just getting started servicing. Um, just a little service though. Five hundred hour. There is another machine working behind those trees. Um, I am blocking the road, so I hope he doesn't finish at a similar time. Otherwise, if he stood chatting to me, <laughs> poor fellow, if he stood chatting to me. Um, so yeah, like, we'll get the uh, engine oil dropped out. Should only take an hour of this. Quicker the better as well, because these clegs are absolutely everywhere. Horrible things. What do you call them in your part of the country? Horse flies. Look at it. Nasty. Should really have long sleeves on, but I'm going to be moving that quickly. Won't have time to set on us. Right, I'm finished on this side. Engine oil's done. Pilot filter done. Engine oil's still draining. I've just noticed the most disgusting thing, so I thought I'll show you. So if you're having your tea, look away. I suppose it depends how disturbed you think it is, but I think it's absolutely disgusting. And this fella's spill kit. It is absolutely swarming with clegs. Uh, I was gonna just about to lift that up and move it out my way, and now I'm not gonna touch it because they will all come jumping ours. Disgusting. Yuck. I hate the plumbing things. What purpose on this planet do they have? Ah, oh, they're coming out of that. Ah, oh, yuck. I'm going to put my mucky rag over this hole. They can't get out at us. Yuck. Flipping hate the damn things. What purpose do they have other than to irritate the life out of you? Hey, man. Just have a full hazmat bodysuit on, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh. Right, we've only got two fuel filters, engine out to go in, final drives to go in, check over, oh, put it, oh there's, um, yesterday it came up with, oh was it yesterday, yeah yesterday morning phone was about half past seven, um, with an engine management light and the pins for the real pressure sensor need nipping up, I've only got that to do, that'll just be a five minute job. Don't switch the machine off, leave it five minutes, switch the machine back on. Oh, Ali, Erico's disappeared. There you go. Does it again, just do that again. If it persists, let me know and I'll come to you a bit sooner. That's how you do it. That is how you do it. I love and love that app. So he's phone us, I've got an engine management light. And he started reading out the error code. It says, yeah, I'll phone you back. I'm going to have a look on the tracker. So I had a look at the telematics for this machine. Clicked on it, it told me what the error code was, clicked on the troubleshooting and I said, right, switch the machine off, restart it after five minutes, all the error code's gone, right, work away, you'll be fine, it's not to worry about, I'll, obviously I was coming to service it anyway. Easy. That might have changed my whole day up yesterday, if I'd, if I'd not had that uh, capability of being able to just find the machine see what it is you wouldn't have that confidence to say oh um just uh you'll be f you'll be fine just just run it and then 10 minutes later your phones you back and say ah oh, yeah that engine's making a knocking noise now <laughs> it's a good thing that app i use it all the time right. 
Put the bigger set out for the filter. See how tight did I put this on last time? Very. Although I find that these fuel filters in front of the radiators, no matter how loose or tight you put them, they're always tight to come off. Right, I'm all done in there. Shut this. No, I'll leave the door open for two reasons. One, it's awkward to do it one handed, and two, I'll obviously start it and make sure it's not leaking. Um, right, I just got fluids to go back in it, and then that little squeeze of the real pressure sensor pins. Which will be a peach. Yeah, tell you what, it's a good job I don't mind this fella because that'd be a cruel trick to pay on somebody, wouldn't it? If I took that bag and opened it and shut the cab door and locked it. Be a nice little surprise to wake up to at three o'clock in the morning, wouldn't it? <laughs> That'd be a cruel trick. Cruel trick to play. Service is done. I nearly forgot to nip these pins up. So all I do is take this plastic clip off and then just with a pick, just shove those. See how they're slightly bored now. Basically, it just makes those pins a bit tighter on the connector. But first, I need to put this plastic guard back on, hang on. There we go, that's how it looks. So this guard slides off to the side. You can see it slides down that way. If you want to, you could pull your pins out, but I don't need to. And this sits on the end of the rail here. So this is the rail pressure sensor. It's what's telling the ECU and the metering unit what the pressure is in this rail. Um, and without that, the metering unit doesn't know what it's doing. So it just gives it full pressure and chucks the end of that relief valve off its seat. Dumps a lot of fuel down there. Machine goes into limp mode. He was telling us it did it yesterday over the back of beyond over there. And he said 15 minutes earlier, it'd have been stuck in a swamp. But the outcome would have been the same, switch it off in the middle of your swamp and then uh, fire it back up and it'll be fine De -de -de. Oh. right go and kindle it up and park it up oh. all filters are done oils are done just got my tools in the back of here to put away I had a missed call on my works phone while I was up there tinkering. Ow! On horse flies. Who have I missed a call off now? Somebody keeps phoning me on uh, WhatsApp. I mean, I haven't even got any. Presumably, WhatsApp uses a an internet signal. Can people not just phone you on a normal phone number rather than through WhatsApp? I'm falling back now, but I tried before and I couldn't get through. Right, there we go. We'll march this back off into the woods. Uh, it's half past four now, so day's done. Uh, it's worked out all right. I've just had a phone call. I need to go and move the combine. Um, oil seed rate harvest is in progress at the moment, and winter barley is done. So yeah, go and do that, and then uh, see you in the morning, I suppose. Look at that, what a beautiful day. Wednesday now. I'm heading to uh, a quarry um, down South Cumbria. We've got a 30 tonne digger to service and a 20 tonne digger to service. They are flat out busy, but they're letting me have the machines sort of straddling lunchtime to minimize the downtime because i'm not available this saturday or next saturday and three weeks is a bit of a stretch um so once i get there the pressure will be on to to get the machines up and running um but yeah i need to be there for half 12 it's 11 o'clock now so if i'm there just after 12 then i get a bit of a head start so we'll go and enjoy the weather this poor fella is trying to fix this electric gate and people like me keep coming in and out <laughs> oh you'd be mad wouldn't you just want to be getting on
give us a cheery wave anyway. Right, let's go and enjoy this weather, shall we? Okay, quarter past 12. I've got the 30 tonner first. They're changing screens. They're putting a water pump in. Nearly dropped here. So this machine isn't doing anything for the time being. So we'll get this one done. And then when I finish this, the fellow on the 20 tonner will go for his lunch. And I'll have that one serviced by the time he's finished his sandwiches. That's the that's the plan. But yeah, I don't know what the worry was about. He was looming and iron about whether or not I could come today and do it, but I says I'm I says that it's not like it's gonna take us all day. I said, you know, a good hour and a half, two hours on the 30 tonner, I'll see it done and then the 20 tonner. It's only a 500 hour service, so that won't take much either. So yeah, we'll get it. I'm just going to wait for this drum to fill up and then I can leave it and rattle the other filters off. Because basically this is only a 500 hour service plus a return filter. So, oh yeah, final drive as well I suppose. Fill in! Oh, I'm lovely and warm today. Notice how I'm not complaining about being hot. I'm not. <laughs> but I am hot. Um, got me a selection box, which means that all my fluids are done. Uh, what have we got again? Fuel, hydraulic, swing gear box, right hand track, left hand track, and engine. Lovely job. So, just got fluids to go back in now. Uh, a couple of cab filters. That's everything. Absolutely flying it. 14 minutes past 12, wasn't it? I'm gonna be on for an hour and 20 minutes at this rate. I'm still thinking I've got a... Oh no, I thought I had a missed call there. Eh? Don't want one of them today. Oh, it's just the boss. Only the boss. If it was urgent, he'd try again. <laughs> right, onwards. Um, I'll get the engine oil cowped in it. Engine oil. 38 litres. It does say in the sheet 36, but it's definitely not 36. Definitely not. There's more than that to get it to the top mark, top fill mark. So we'll grab the two, we'll have them two. Take them upstairs. Everybody's gone up for the lunch. It's all right for some. But I'll find somewhere nice to sit in the Lake District. Okay. You can see I'm hot. Really got my head down and got that done. Um, so yeah, quite happy. Uh, right, start it up, see if it runs. Reset all these filter lights as well. A lovely digger, this 360 cameras look. I do like this digger, I'm sure I've said before. Clear all of this. Bye 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 bye. Right, hang on. Hey, we're up and running. Whew, I tell you what, the uh, air conditioning filters on this, they were chock a block. Chock a block. I bet it'll be a bit cooler in there now. More airflow. Check when you need. Good. Right. Um, I'll go up top and do the 20 tonner in a minute. That's a lovely engine, that, isn't it? There is nothing wrong with that. I'm going to come back with a fan belt for this because I'm pretty sure I said last time I don't need the fan belt. Pack up. I 
we'll pack up and we'll uh, head up the top. Maybe a bit more of a breeze up there. Hopefully. Next one. Just been a tank ago, past spraying water everywhere to keep the dust down. It's so tempted to go and run into it. Run into it. Um, yeah, 500 hours service for this one. This one's uh, loading this stone through this McCloskey screener. Well, it isn't it? <laughs> Obviously. I wonder if I can service it like that. Cross carriage. No, I can't. It's a short answer to that. I'll have to fire this one up. Put these um, soggy gloves back on. Delightful. <laughs> Things you do to save the planet. Environmentally friendly, I am. Oh, yeah. Um. Right, we'll drop some oil. There we go, everyone's away back to work now. I've finished. I'm really hot. Um, just in the last 15 minutes, so I've had a phone call. There's a 235 that is in the Lake District with an oil leak. Could I just call in and have a look? Um, and so we'll go and have a look on the way past. It's right on the way home, like, so it's no great hardship. I'll have my lunch first. It's just a leak on the hydraulic tank where the return filter sits, I think. Someone will have been in there servicing and nicked the o-ring. That's what I think anyway. There we go. I tell you what, when I get in this van, I'm going to regret not going to Halfords this morning and buying a new fridge. I nearly did, and then I got sidetracked with me laptop. So, yeah, a bit of a shame, right? Oh, here's my works phone. Lost it. There you go, back up here. Um, this machine's developed an oil leak from the cap here, from where the return filter sits, and actually a bit of muck in here. Look, Which ain't good, is it? Anyway, um, it's all like pitted round here, so I think I've got one. It's obviously not that one. It is going to be that one, I think, isn't it? So, hopefully, get this one peeled out. Put a new one in there. Gonna clean that gutter out there. A bit of grit in there. Right, there we go. Um, fixed his aircon as well. The pressure sensor on the radiator in there um, uh, wasn't on properly. Because we were up there looking at that. Um, Hydraulic tank and it says hell it's hot up here. He says oh it's warmer in the cab. He says why have you need aircon? He goes no, no aircon. Um, that's him away now. Aircon's working. Maybe the hydraulic leak's sorted too. Who knows? I do like the 235s. They're a smart looking digger. They really are. That was a Euro auction special that one. They've had their... Uh, Fair share of problems with that one to be fair like. They have sometimes there's a reason why these machines go into Euro auctions. They're not just done the shift on a big job and they get rid of them. I think there's a lot of machines that have been working on that HS2 project get put through there with very little hours. I bet there's I bet there's good bargains. I don't know if you can hear that squeaking noise. It's been absolutely doing my head in. I must have a stone stuck in my brakes somewhere. All I can hear, especially when I'm going through that town there with everybody out in the beer gardens looking at the lake and they're crawling past in the traffic and it's squeak, 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 squeak. Now that'll save you a lot right for having a nice afternoon in the sunshine with a nice cold beverage. 
Squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> right. Time to wrap the video up. It's probably going to be a long one today, and um, I've got a job on Monday which I can't take you to. I've got an 8,000 hour service on a loading shovel. That is full hydraulic change, transmission change. So you won't see a video from me on Tuesday night, so that's going to stagger everything. So uh, the next video you should be able to see tomorrow's efforts on the weekend. And then the next video after that. So after the Saturday video, you'll not see one till Wednesday, I don't think. I'm off on Friday. My wife's away. I'm telling you. Life of Riley. So I'm off work on Friday to look after the kiddie winkles. I oh, know. It's a hard life, isn't it? <laughs> Tell you what, I'll have put a shift in by the time I've spent a day looking after them. <laughs> anyway, I'm not complaining. Should be enjoying it. Right, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know. Click the subscribe button. And for more bits and pieces throughout the week, check out my Instagram. Then you know what to look forward to in the YouTube bids, don't you? Right, see ya. <laughs>